There are very few franchises out there that currently have a history and legacy as profound as Halo's. The first three entries into the Halo franchise were absolutely incredible, and I think everyone watching this video would fully agree with that. Everyone knew Halo, the Master Chief, Cortana, even those on PlayStation and PC. It was a console seller, and over time it built up such a hardcore fan base and universe of lore rich content that even to this day, the hype is still there. You know that a franchise is huge when two games in the Bungie era weren't including the main character, the Master Chief, yet still sold an astronomical amount of copies. However, in 2010, when Bungie handed over its reins from the Halo franchise to 343 Industries, Halo's never quite hit the same mark as it did with the first five Bungie games. Until 343 did this. Look, I don't care what anybody says, Halo Infinite for me is a top three Halo story of all time, and I stand fully behind that. Look, the multiplayer side of things is completely irrelevant to me here, because that is just a sack of cack, and that's just over there. But as far as the single player experience and story goes, it's the most Halo feeling game we've had since Bungie's last entry, Halo Reach. I had the urge to want to go back and play Halo Infinite's campaign again, and well, I decided to do a full video retrospective on the storyline and just talk about why I believe it's a top three Halo campaign and revisiting the lore and everything that we may have forgotten about considering the game now is coming up to nearly three years old. How often do you go back and play Halo Infinite's campaign? Probably you've played it once or twice and you'll never touch it again. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below on what you think of Halo Infinite's story, not the multiplayer, just the story and campaign experience. Where does it rank on your Halo tier list? And whilst you're down there, why not leave a like on today's video? However, without further ado everyone, let's delve straight into Halo Infinite's story and take a retrospective look at it. Halo Infinite's campaign starts pretty much from the legendary ending of Halo 5, our first look at Zeta Halo. The UNSC and the Banished were at war, with the UNSC Infinity being surprised attacked, with Atriox being at the forefront of that. It took the Banished all of 20 minutes to take over the UNSC Infinity, causing it to crash land somewhere on Zeta Halo, where we have no idea right now, but it's worth thinking about. I do just want to interrupt this part and just say that if you do want to go through any of the lore, for Halo Infinite in general. I've done about 40 to 50 videos down below just on this game alone, going into all of the lore, loads of different theories and things like that. So go check them out if you're interested in that. Before the events of this cutscene, however, a series of audio logs allude to the fact that a series of Spartans evacuated the Infinity, four Spartans you come across during the campaign, to continue their survival efforts on Zeta Halo. And Lasky, well, jumping onto a pelican, and communications cut out as he was also evacuating towards the ring. Is he alive? Well, we don't know. The UNSC were here because this was where Cortana and her guardian from the end of Halo 5 were. Their plan, of course, was to make everyone join her in a created army, or face the consequences of death. The UNSC found their opportunity to find Cortana, lock her down to be deleted, stopping her once and for all. Cortana destroyed a series of large UNSC operating bases, two of which were the UNSC facility in Sydney, which by the way on a scale was absolutely ridiculously big, resulting in all of them to need to hide away and fight for survival, hiding from Cortana until they figured out their next move. And the second, turning all UNSC AIs against the humans, Leonidas being one that we see in game, who controlled a UNSC training facility ran by no other than Jun. Not all UNSC AIs, however, were swayed by Cortana. Of course, we had Roland, who was on the UNSC Infinity towards the end of Halo 5, who helped the humans escape. And he, as far as we know, wasn't a part of the created uprising and stuck with the humans. But the majority of them, I would imagine, would have moved over to Cortana. The UNSC, however, had no other choice but to strike now and to strike fast. Dr. Catherine Halsey's plan to lock down Cortana is one that I think Cortana knew was coming. Throughout the story of Halo 4, we'd hear Cortana say to the Chief, they'll pair you with another AI, even another Cortana model if Halsey lets them. Although this may not have been the initial plan, this is very much what happened. Halsey created something or someone called the Weapon, 
This was a smart AI that would infiltrate the ring's infrastructure, lock down Cortana, so the chief would be able to capture her and take her back to the infinity for deletion, and the weapon herself would be deleted too. This was the plan, and Cortana was there waiting for the chief, expecting him. Not, however, expecting Atriox to be the one to greet her. The chief had already taken the weapon to the ring, and then made his way back to the infinity, and that's where the banish struck. As we said, 20 minutes was all it took for the banished to infiltrate and take over the UNSC Infinity. And during this time, well, Cortana was locked down within the silent auditorium, stood there waiting for the chief. Of course, her guardian, which we know from the end of Halo 5, crash landed onto the ring for whatever reason, whether it was because Cortana wasn't there to control it anymore or what, we don't really know. But we do know in the background, in the distance on the Data Halo, when we're actually on the ring, there is a crashed guardian. And yeah, interesting. But when Atriox turned up and showed Cortana what he did to the Chief, well, she couldn't believe it. Cortana knew, however, deep down that the Chief would be back, which is where she devised a plan. Milliseconds it took her to think of this. Atriox wanted to control the ring. He wanted to learn all of the ring's secrets. And he wanted to fire the ring. For the Banished to have control of the most powerful weapon in the universe, one of the seven original Halo rings from the Forerunner Halo array. This ring is also much larger than the current existing Halo rings as well, spanning at around 30,000 kilometers in width, compared to the current ones, which are around 10,000 kilometers in width. Cortana knew about the weapon and knew that Chief would need to eventually come to the ring to collect her. She made her decision to delay Atriox as much as she possibly could. She sacrificed herself, destroying a large portion of Zeta Halo, preventing Atriox and the Banished from firing it or using it as a weapon, and even learning more about the ring. This gave the Chief enough time to be found, make his way back onto the ring, learn about what happened in the six months that he was out, and regain a UNSC presence on Zeta Halo. Throughout the story, Chief and the weapon make their way across the ring, figuring out what the Banished were doing, what they were looking for. They were digging for something, it wasn't until we met the monitor of Zeta Halo, Despondent Pyre, did we start to get a little bit more information as to what the Banished were looking for. Despondent Pyre was captured and ripped apart by an antagonist in the game named the Harbinger. The Harbinger was like something we'd never seen before, a new species in the Halo universe. She was part of a faction called the Endless. The species, however, was named the Zalanin. The Endless were a species we know pretty much nothing about even to this day, a species that were imprisoned by the Forerunners, and well, the Forerunners threw away the key. They were also labelled by Cortana as worse than the Flood, so it's... <laughs> nobody knows why right now, but there are some theories as to why which we'll go into shortly. What we do know, however, is that someone named the Grand Edict was at the forefront of the imprisonment. He said that the Endless must be contained, with Cortana mentioning during the campaign that they are worse than the Flood, as we'd mentioned. The origins of the Zalanin were unknown, but they were a sentient species that existed during the fall of the Forerunner civilization. They were not indexed by the Forerunners prior to the firing of the Halo Array. During the following century, with the reintroduction phase of the conservation measure underway, Despondent Pyre, the monitor of Installation 07, discovered the Zalanin alive and well, inexplicably unaffected by the weapon that had been lethal to all other intelligent life in the galaxy, the firing of Halo. The Forerunners and the Zalanin arranged a parlay between the delegates from the two species, with Installation 07 taking into range of the Zalanin homeworld. The Forerunners, realising that their plan to pass the mantle of responsibility to humanity was in danger and treating the Zalanin as a threat to the rest of the galaxy's species, decided that the Zalanin were to be imprisoned on Installation 07, with some members subjugated for study at the Silent Auditorium on the Ring. The Grand Edict charged Installation 07's monitor, Despondent Pyre, with guarding the Zalanin's imprisonment and assigned offensive bias to the Ring to aid in this. However, a few Zalanin managed to survive from their species imprisonment and began to roam the Milky Way in secret, visiting scattered outposts on different installations in hope to find a solution in order to free their people from their imprisonment. The Harbinger wasn't one of these ones that managed to roam in secret, as she was released by Eshram and she was held within the Silex on Zeta Halo. The Harbinger and the Banished were using each other, but the Banished had the worst end of the stick here without them even knowing. 
The Banished wanted the ring rebuilt so it could be fired or used as a weapon, and they could be in control of the most powerful weapon in the Milky Way. However, the Endless, being worse than the Flood, once freed, might not show mercy on the Banished as they think. Their alliance may not be as tight as what they expect, and well, they may take the ring for themselves. However, rebuilding the ring was on the agenda of the Harbinger 2, as she needed to rebuild the Silent Auditorium in order to find the location of the Endless. This was done towards the end of the game, where the Harbinger would find and establish a connection with a sentient being, or beings. As much as the weapon tried to stop it, to track the connection, she couldn't quite do so. However, she did notice something helping her, something that was trying to stop the connection. This is what we believe to be offensive bias, but we can't confirm or deny that right now because we just don't have the information to do that. Theorizing, however, we can probably say that it is. The Harbinger, however, was successful in her efforts despite being defeated by the Chief in the weapon. She found the Endless and was even talking to someone towards the end of the campaign. But the connection was very, very old. Again, we don't know who she was talking to. Some say it's Atriox, some might say it's the Endless or someone that's a part of the Endless that the Harbinger is now freed because of this connection being established. We don't actually fully know. But the Harbinger's mission has ended, so she needs someone else to carry it on. And if that's not Atriox, well, who is that? At the very end of the campaign in the legendary ending, we do see Atriox actually alive, despite Cortana destroying the ring and the silent auditorium with him inside. But I don't think this is Atriox. But of course, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Who do you think the Harbinger was talking to? But the Halo Infinite story isn't just about the Endless for me. And this is my favourite part of the story and why it's one of my favourites so far. And why I love it so much. Chief and Cortana have been together for 20 plus years. Literally, they're as old as I am in terms of a partnership. From Halo CE up to right now. The Chief built up a trust with Cortana that he's never had with anyone else before. He looked after her and, well, she looked after him. However, when she died in Halo 4, the Chief was very much left on his own for the majority of that time and even going into Halo 5 until sort of midway through the story. Since Cortana did what she did, killed all that she did, and the Chief, well, could have in his mind stopped her, he's struggling to trust anyone. He's struggled to trust anyone since that. How can the one person that the Master Chief trusted for all of this time, and pretty much loved as well, betray him and humanity like they did? After all they'd done, they'd been through, she just neglected all of them and just went off on a crazy rampage. The Chief had trouble trusting anyone after this, and to be fair, I kind of understand it. And we saw this throughout the story with the weapon as well. The weapon on multiple occasions was trying to access the ring's infrastructure and encountered issues with the Harbinger trying to mess around with it and toy with her and try to like cut her off and things along those lines. When she encountered trouble, the Chief would regularly initiate the weapon's deletion sequence, ready just in case. We see our first occurrence of this when the weapon is installed into the ring's infrastructure, trying to open the doorway to the command spire. The first one was a false alarm, of course, but when inside the command spire, the Harbinger knows the weapon's there, trying to get inside. Chief, however, initiated the deletion sequence, and just as though it was about to happen, the weapon stopped it, saying that she thought that he was going to protect her, not give up on her. The weapon throughout the story as well figured out that she was a copy of Cortana and became concerned that she would turn out like Cortana. Rogue. The Chief, however, would come for her, tell her that it would never happen, he wouldn't let that happen this time. The story of the Chief learning to trust again, meeting Fernando Esparza and hearing his story as well, comforting him, telling him that he failed Cortana, the UNSC, and he would not fail him. Just listen to this. Should leave me here with the rest of the carpets. We all fail. We all make mistakes. It's what makes us human. I'm sorry, Chief, but how have you ever failed? I should have protected Cortana. Stopped everything from going wrong. I failed her. I will not fail you. Chief. 
The story wasn't just about introducing a new faction, but it was also about the chief learning to love again and to trust again. To form a new circle of trust and to regain the UNSC presence on Zeta Halo and fight back against the Banished and eventually the Endless. Eventually, having the send off for Cortana that we all thought we had in Halo 4, but this time it was for good and it was the one that Cortana deserved. We need extraction. Of course you do. On my way. The Endless will return. I couldn't decrypt it in time. It's okay. You'll figure something out. Of course I will. I'm... They'll pair you with another AI. Maybe even another Cortana model if Halsey lets them. It won't be me. But you know that, right? But that doesn't matter. It's just another echo. She's right, John. Just another echo. Sorry, I'm messing with you. I just had a feeling that's what she would say. Do you see what I see? So much potential. I'm sorry. I didn't have long to plan this. A few milliseconds, really. I hope it worked out. Look at us. We just keep saying goodbye, don't we? But this isn't an end. It's a chance to make amends, to rectify mistakes. And it starts here. I was wrong. I thought that I could do this on my own. But I forgot that the whole point of all of this the entire reason that I chose you in the first place was that we were supposed to be a team. Perfectly suited, perfectly matched, perfectly... perfect. In these final moments, I know what my last mission is. I need to make sure you two learn from my mistakes, become stronger because of them. I chose well, Master Chief. I really did. Now, it's up to you. Now, the very end of the story. The Chief and the weapon were inside the silent auditorium as it began to fall apart, and well, something opened a portal for them to escape. Was this offensive bias? I think so. Let me know your theories down below. They were teleported three days into the future, into a sandy desert part of the ring, on the opposite side of the ring as to where they were. Multiple ancient forerunner rings all in the sand, with one that had a missing portion destroyed, like say Halo's current state. Here the weapon makes a few very good points. How did we teleport here? And why did it take days for us to get here? Were we in some form of time lock? It was instant for us, but it took days in reality. And where the heck are we? We all know that part of Mendicant Bias was left on Zeta Halo, and the remaining part of him was buried beneath the Epitaph Tower in a sandy desert. Maybe this is where a portion of Mendicant Bias was buried, potentially? Maybe we were teleported here by offensive bias because this is where the Endless are buried, something along those lines. So many questions, very few answers right now. However, the legendary ending was the most interesting part for me here, and it tells us a lot more about the Endless than we originally knew. We see Atriox holding a key to the containment facility in which the Endless were being held. We also hear the Grand Edict and Despondent Pyre talk about preparing the imprisonment, saying that this is unprecedented. It's never happened before. Take a listen to it. Are the vessels prepared? The Silex is already, as is the Auditorium. Grand Edict, this is most unprecedented. The Endless must be contained. I will inform the Criterion to proceed. They believe we are here to help. It matters not. Today we do a 
what it takes to maintain order, to preserve our truth. Time will forget they ever existed. Time is not a construct we can control. And we cannot allow it to be theirs. bias has been deployed look there's a lot to unpack here we could go down a rabbit hole of theories all day and as i said check the video uh, playlist in the description down below if you want to go through all the theories that i've done in the past they're all very good and well respected by people to be fair um but there's so much so many unanswered questions that we don't have information for right now but the forerunners wanted to reserve the truth they cannot allow the endless to control the construct of time and if halo cannot end them it must imprison them they will be interrogated, studied by engineers, despondent pyre, and of course, offensive bias. And now, here we are. We have more questions than answers for this story, but I think it was intentionally done this way because DLC was meant to answer these questions, and of course DLC never happened. So the next Halo game is going to be big, bold, strong, and just answer everything for us. Who are the Endless? Where is Lasky? Where's the Infinity? Where's Blue Team? Fire Team Osiris? Is Lock alive? Why, how did Atriox survive? I could be here all day. But I'm hoping next year, or this year, we'll hear something about the new Halo game. And this will show us offensive bias. Maybe even Mendicant at some stage. The precursors, because we think they're heavily linked to the Endless. Look, I don't know. Maybe. We'll have to wait and see. But ladies and gentlemen, that was a retrospective look at Halo Infinite's storyline. For me, it was a fantastic story, and Halo suits the open world field so well. I really hope they carry on this feel going into the next game, but just adding different biomes, wildlife, and things that you can do in the open world to make it more interesting. I hope they continue with it, and I'm so hopeful that the next game is as good, if not better, than Halo Infinite. But guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you did go ahead and enjoy, drop a like on today's video. Subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel as well. I'd love to try and hit 30,000 within the next few months. That'd be absolutely amazing. And of course, leave your theories down below. I always love to listen to your theories. No theory is a stupid theory. Everyone has their own mindset and theories and whatnot. So leave them all down below. We'll have a read of them as a community. But thanks all for watching, everyone. We'll speak to you all next time.